we now are going to continue in our series that I launched last week entitled Hope. Hope. And uh, I don't know about you, but I could do with a dose of hope. I explained to you uh, last week that all it takes is uh, for me to spend a few moments on my, on my daily news junket uh, around all the various apps I have and websites for me to feel a, a sense of hopelessness. And certainly in the world events that we're seeing recently, uh, there is such an escalation of conflict in the world for which we pray, Lord Jesus, for your peace. We pray where man is trying to, to, uh, to solve things, where man is trying to use uh, might to, and, and, and war to solve these things. We know, Lord Jesus, that it is only your peace that comes from you. That is what we pray. We pray that through these conflicts, Lord God, there will be an awakening to you, Lord God. We ask that in your name. But all of that to say, you know, we, we do have this sense sometimes of hopelessness. But as Christians, we have to remember that there is a promise of hope that is rooted in God and God alone. And I shared with you what is the anchor text for our series, which is from Romans 12, verse 12, that says this. Paul says, rejoice in hope. Rejoice in hope and be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. And for me, that's a verse for the year for myself personally, and I believe that the Lord is sharing it for all of us this year because there is life in this instruction from Paul that we are to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and to be constant in prayer. Rather good instructions, I think you'll find. Um, but I do believe that for many, um, there is a sense that we are uh, having a sense of hopelessness. And I wanted to come uh, in this series and maybe shift our focus away from hopelessness onto the hope that we find in Jesus. And if you're wondering why I'm playing around with my notes, I just discovered that I pulled out my notes from last week. So um, for those of you who missed last week, that wouldn't have been a problem. For those of you who were here, sorry about that. But that doesn't change the introduction. So I don't know about you, but when I think about hope, sometimes my mind goes to, uh, I hope that. This is a worldly kind of hope. You know, I hope that it will work out okay. Or I hope that, uh, you know, the sun will shine this afternoon. Or I hope that. That is not the kind of hope that we are going to be looking at over these coming weeks. The kind of hope that we're looking at is a hope that is living, that is alive, that is based on the promises of God. And what I said last week was that what you'll find is that that which you put your trust in is that which you hope in. Think about it. That which you put your trust in is the thing that you put your hope in. If you trust in your finances, you will put hope in your money for your future. If you trust in people, and by the way, we want to be trusting one another, but I'm talking about a kind of trust that is for my whole life, you know, the kind of trust that we replace from God to other people. If you put your trust in other people, then your hope is going to be in other people. And who knows that sometimes we get disappointed by other people. And so really, when we're talking about hope in God, the question is, who are you putting your trust in? And you can do this as an exercise. Think about it. What are you hoping in right now? Because your answer is going to show you who you're putting your trust in. Good little exercise still, isn't it? What are you hoping in right now? Because that will show you who you are putting your trust in. And... Um, I was reminded of Ephesians 2.12 as I was preparing for this talk. And Paul says this to the church in Ephesus, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ. So he's speaking to believers here, saying, listen, there was a time where you were separated from Christ and you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise. All of that is to say you were an alien from the promises of God that Jesus died on the cross for you. 
And then he says this, having no hope and without God in the world. And I think this rather focuses, focuses in on the point, which is this. A biblical hope is based on a relationship with Jesus. Because I want to say this, and I said it last week in the 1130 service, is that if you are here this morning or you're watching me online and you have yet to say yes to Jesus and you're not walking with him, I want to say this, there is no hope for you. Whoa, did the pastor just say that? Aren't you supposed to encourage people? Yeah, I am. I'm encouraging you to say yes to Jesus. Because it's in that place that you will find a kind of hope that is not based on your circumstances. You see, once you are walking with Jesus, you have a hope that is assured. What is that hope? That he loves you and that you are going to be with him for eternity. What is that hopelessness that you feel without Christ? Let me tell you, if you're feeling that sense of hopelessness, it is this. You're going to spend eternity without him and that you are lost. But you see, that is the gospel message, isn't it? The gospel message is the good news that we can have hope in a living God that paid the price on the cross for us. And you don't have to do anything for it. We looked last week as I laid a foundation at the why and the what of hope. And we looked at three things about biblical hope. The first one was that true hope comes from God. We just touched on that. The second thing is that hope is a gift. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. It's freely given to you. There's not many things in this world that are free, if any. But I tell you something, a hope in God, that's free for you. You know, Christianity is the only religion that is not based on your ability to earn a relationship with a God. Did you know that? Christianity is not about performing your way into heaven. It's about recognizing that Christ has done it all for you on the cross and you simply, simply come as you are and you say, Lord, would you take me as I am? I recognize that you've done it all. How liberating is that? So good. And then the third thing we looked at, which is hope endures. And this morning's talk then is entitled Hope Changes Everything. Hope changes everything. Another way to look at this would be the fruit of hope or the benefits of hope. And I feel like the, the Lord's kind of given me a mission the first three months of this year as we lead into Easter and we celebrate Easter Sunday and the hope in a resurrected life with Christ. I feel like God's given me a mission to tell you that hope will change your life. I feel like God's laid on me a burden to tell you this, you don't need to live in hopelessness. Why? Because hope will change your circumstances. Hope changes everything. Now, you don't need to put your hands up. But who would like to sign up for that? You put your hands up. Well done. <laughs> Either you didn't listen to me or you just like disobeying me. It's fine. Just kidding. Hope changes everything. And I think that it speaks to something in our hearts to say, whoa, yes, that's what I need. That's what I want. And so we're going to look at what that looks like this morning. You know, we looked at hope as a future, invisible, and confident expectation of the fulfillment and promises of God. And I said to you last week, this hope isn't about a wish upon a star, it's about a hope upon the sun. Hope upon the sun. And I want to uh, read to you 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4. This is what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again in a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, the hope that we are talking about is a living hope. It is living. Why? Because it's hope that is Jesus, and Jesus is alive. But I want to say this. This kind of hope takes work. Oh, I thought you said it was a free gift. It absolutely is, but it's not a passive gift. You will not receive this by osmosis. 
You will not receive this lying down on your sofa saying, my world is terrible. Let me keep thinking about all the bad stuff. That is not how you're going to receive hope. It's a daily choice to put our trust in him and to ask the Holy Spirit to pour out his hope in our lives. We have to make a decision to walk in hope. And you might say, Mark, I've got no strength for it. I I tried that. It's been months. I've given up. And I hear you. And I shared last week some of our own challenges as a family. I'm, I'm not speaking as one that doesn't live this with us all. But you see, the Christian walk is a walk. You see, the Christian walk is a well done. It requires movement in the direction of Christ. And so it's not about ignoring our circumstances and saying, like, everything's okay. I am, I am an optimist, really, by nature. But in order for me to be an optimist, I have to sometimes ignore the reality of life. Much to the frustration of my wife. It's fine, it, that's not that bad. No, it really is. Nah, it's good. Now, hope is not, you know, optimism based on unrealism. Hope is actually looking at the circumstance head on and then doing this. That's what we're talking about. But you've got to make a choice. I've got to make a choice to fix my eyes on Jesus, who is our living hope. Right, let's do this bit of an exercise. I feel like exercises today. Not the type of the gym or anything like that. Right. I want you to look at something that is very difficult in your life right now. Something that you feel hopeless about, hope, hopeless about. Have a think. It might be a family member. It might be a financial situation. It might be a job. It might be some decisions you've got. It might be a challenging meeting that you have tomorrow. It might be a difficult conversation you have. What is that thing? Look at it at the moment. Don't ignore it. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to look at Jesus. Jesus is coming in the room with you. And I want you to hand over that thing to Jesus. I'm going to pray. Lord, I just pray now that you would bring hope where there is hopelessness in this situation. I pray for all those that responded, whether in the room or online, Lord, that as they have handed over those circumstances to you, as they've made a decision to fix their eyes on you, Lord, hope would well up. By the power of your Holy Spirit, would you pour out your hope into that situation? And I pray boldly, because it's in your word, Lord God, that they would rejoice in that. That where once they cried through it, they would now sing through it where once there was trepidation, would there be a spring in their step? Lord God, I pray in your name. Amen. So with that rather lengthy introduction, how does hope change everything? I'd like to give you four things. The first one is this, and you won't be surprised by this because I just prayed it. Hope can bring us joy even in the tough times. Hope can bring us joy even in the tough times. You know, we've been singing this morning about how big and great God is. And I read to you earlier from Isaiah 12, and we looked at the truth of the salvation that we have in him will bring us joy. For me personally, when I get to a place of hopelessness, I find comfort and joy in the truth that I am his and nothing can separate me from his love. Like seriously, it's, it's like a moment where I just say, you know what, this doesn't matter really. In the grand scheme of eternity, which FYI is a very long time, in the grand scheme of life, it's okay. Sometimes we just need to say to ourselves, or someone needs to say to us, it's okay, you're his, he loves you. I know it's difficult, I know it's tough, but hey, you're his. You mean I'm his? I'm his. 
hold on a minute, let's just get this right. You mean the God that created the universe and flung the stars into space, he said that nothing will separate us? Yes. Oh my word, that's amazing. Like we need to make a decision sometimes to focus on the truth that we are his. I'm gonna say it again, you are his. Right, all of you say now to yourself, I am his, let's do this, I am his. Nothing's going to separate you from him. No height, no depth, no nothing. Wow. You know, as I start thinking about that, I'm like, I want to get there quick. I mean, I love life, Lord, but I can't wait to be with you for eternity in heaven. I mean, that is going to be a joyous experience. But you see, you can, real, you can walk through that joy right now. But it takes us a moment to remember the truth that we are his. And I don't want to minimize what you're going through and for some of you, that feeling of hopelessness, but I wanna say this, just put your eyes on him and say out loud, I am his. You feel better? I mean, you're his. I could just do a whole sermon with that phrase, you are his. But there is joy. You know, Habakkuk, we haven't got time to read it now. It's going to come up on the screen, actually. I think maybe we've got a slide for it. Have we got Habakkuk up there? There we go. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. Anyone feel like that? I mean, you might not have olive trees and all that jazz, but, and you may not have a fig tree, but that might represent your life. Though, carry on, let's next slide. Yet, whoa, it's like another nevertheless word. Nevertheless, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. And that Lord in capitals means Jehovah or Yahweh. What, that, what does that mean? We have a personal relationship with a personal God that has revealed his name to us. I will take joy in the God of my... Mm-mm-mm. We've got to, you know what, I'm going to say this right now. Us Christians, we've got to be more joyful. I mean, people must look at us and go, wow, man, they're miserable. I mean, I know not you, but me. Like, well, I don't want to be like him. He's always miserable. Like, I thought it was supposed to, like, seriously. Imagine I gave you a billion pounds. I clearly don't have that money, so don't ask me for it. But imagine it. Boy, you would have a smile on your face. And someone would say, why are you so excited, Claire? Why are you always so happy? Edward, why have you got this smile on your face and you've got a, a spring in your step? I've got a billion pounds. You're going to be happy. But you've got something way better than a billion pounds. You've been saved from hell and saved to eternity with God in heaven. And yet we walk around like this. Oh, I've got to go to church on Sunday morning. <laughs> Come on, put on your church face. Come on, you can do this. I'm clearly using humor to make a point, but you get it, right? There is joy in Jesus. Where's Eduardo? Can we record that, please? The new song. It's a very good song. I like the song. <laughs> All right. Hey! It's Tiago over there. Bless you, brother. Get up here. Get your guitar. Okay, we better move on because we are running out of time. Who wants number two? Good. Hope can bring us peace in the midst of turmoil. Oh, boy. John 14, 27. Jesus said this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now, what Jesus is saying is there's two kinds of peace. There's a peace that comes, a worldly peace, which is based on eradicating all of life's troubles and difficult circumstances. And sometimes we experience that, isn't that lovely? You see, everything's all right at the moment, actually. The kids aren't shouting. 
I paid the bills this month. I got food in my... It's all okay. And then all of a sudden you hear the kids fighting. Oh, it's gone. (laughs) Clearly not your house, of course. Um, But Jesus says, that kind of peace I don't leave with you. I leave with you a very different kind of peace. You see, it's a peace that comes from knowing that you are his. I told you I'd use that phrase again. It's the kind of peace that Jesus showed us. He was in the boat in a storm. You remember this story? And a storm is rising. Oh, it's terrible. And the disciples are like, ah, we're going to die. And they turn around and there's Jesus. And he's sleeping in this boat. What is going on? Jesus, wake up. He's like, what's the problem? That's the kind of peace. You might be going through the most terrible storm. My prayer for you is that you will sleep peacefully at night. That comes from hope in him. Why? Because if you make a decision to trust in him, hope will come and peace will follow. I'm up for that. Number three. Okay, hope can give us courage in spite of our weaknesses. Hope can give us courage and strength in spite of our weaknesses. Uh, C.T. Studd uh, was a missionary, I believe in the 19th century. Uh, No, it could have been 20. Someone can Google it and let me know later. And he said this, his authority on earth allows us to dare to go to all the nations. His authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success. And his presence with us leaves us no other choice. Oh, isn't that good? You see, his authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success here. Because every spiritual blessing has been given to us. We are seated with Christ in heaven, heavenly places. Are you understanding this? Like, that which God calls you to do will be successful because he says he will equip you for that. And you see, what hope gives us is that when God says, I want you to go to that meeting tomorrow, and I want you to not capitulate, but share how you feel, you can do so with hope, knowing that he is going to give you strength in that moment. Are you hearing me? That's the kind of strength that we're talking about. What about Queen Esther? I love Queen Esther. Anyone here? Read Esther. What a great story of this woman. She wants to save the Jews. If you've got time, go and read it. It's not a long book. And she, in the face of adversity, demonstrates amazing courage. Why? Because she goes to King Xerxes and asks him to spare the life of the Jews. Now, you can't just go up to a king and say, can I have a chat? You're going to die. And she, was under, she understood what was at stake here. But you see, see, she had trust in God. And so she put her hope in him. And from that came a holy boldness. Anyone here want a holy boldness? Put your trust in God and your hope will be in him. Number four, as we bring this plane to a land, hope can keep us focused on God, not the temptations of the world. Now this is a very interesting one. We are in a spiritual battle, you know this. And when we looked at the call series last uh, year, we looked at the story of when uh, of, of holiness that be called set, set apart from the world. Yeah, holiness has been set apart from the world and set apart for Him. And we looked at the story of when the Israelites came out of Egypt, and I said that Egypt is a type of world of coming out of the world and being consecrated to Him. And who knows the battle of the flesh that we have? It's the enemy, the flesh and the world that was to pull us away from walking with Jesus. And I have found that hope can keep me focused on God and his kingdom and not on the kingdom of this world. How does that play out? I was thinking about this this morning. See, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19, where our treasure is, is there our heart is also. And the thing about all these truths like truth, uh, these truths like um, trust and hope and truth, they're, they're not isolated things. They're all interlinked. And I was thinking about this. It's like, if my treasure is in my money, right, then my trust is in it because my heart's there and therefore I hope in it, right? Do you see this linkage? Like, your heart is involved with this. 
But here's the thing, conversely, if my treasure is Jesus and him alone, right, my heart is going to be there and I'm going to therefore trust in him. Are you seeing the connection? And I find the more that I put my trust in him, the more that I recognize that he is my treasure and not the billion pounds per the example earlier, but all of a sudden the things of this world just don't seem as attractive as they once did. And I know you know this. You see, our daily walk is saying that he is more precious than this world. Because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And you see, you can't talk about trust and you can't talk about hope without talking about where your treasure is. And I'd like to ask you a question this morning. Where's your treasure? Do you, I'll be even more specific, lest I make you uncomfortable, apologies. Is Jesus more of a treasure to you than this world? You see, hope changes everything because Jesus has changed it all for us. The question that is before us is, are we going to make a choice to walk in hope? Are we going to make a choice to put our trust in him? Are we going to make a choice to, to fix our eyes on him over the circumstances? That is what is before us this morning. And I want to be able to pray with you all as we stand together.